New York WOR Mike, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, just talking about that whole uh, mafia barbecue kind of thing or a kind of get together. Is they really no such thing would ever take place. I had an uncle who was a uh, soul here in the Genovese family. He's dead, by the way, so I can speak freely about him. And his brother actually was a captain of the crew that they were in and actually came up with Murder Incorporated, Albert, Albert Anastasia. And it's a mafia book. You can even find their names. Um, because the nature of the business is, is just cold. I mean, they just don't get together because they really there is no brotherhood and there's always the fear that you're being watched. And so a large gathering. So, so, well, but this is how this started yesterday. On the show, I was joking about a barbecue I was thinking of having for Labor Day. And I said, or, or mafia movies where they have these great barbecues. And I said, I don't think they really exist. And a guy called and said, no, you're wrong. I was at one in Sacramento. And so you're saying what I suspect is true. There are no such things. No, no. And first of all, Mike, there, 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 were, there were hardly any gang, wise guys in Sacramento. I could tell you that first. <laughs> so, <laughs> Stop it's, it. It's a, oh, that's the, that got me a belly laugh. That's funny. I lived in San Francisco, and I was in I was in Sacramento. Believe me, it's not a place where mafia guys would want to live. So, but no, it, it, it's the truth. But you know, as, as, you, as, you, as you meet these guys and you see the life they live, I mean, you know, they, this kind of fraternity wouldn't exist in the first place. I mean, your, your best bet. To, I mean, people might find them at social clubs where they'll drink coffee and they'll have various types of you know foods or whatever. But as far as like an outing, barbecuing, this stuff virtually doesn't exist because of the, the nature of their business and the fact that they really aren't close with one another. It's just, these are business relationships. Nothing more, nothing less. Just, you know, very vicious. So uh, hard my guys. intuition that there's no such thing, I'm not missing anything, in other words. No, not at all. Not at all. And, and even if something like that took place, they would be eating the same foods anyone else did. Hot dogs, hamburgers, brajol would be on the grill, uh, sausage and peppers. You know, they'd have uh, macaroni salad, potato salad, steaks. I mean, it, it would be as American as it would be anything Italian. So, but the all idea right, so now here's the last word on, on the sauce versus gravy. What did you call it when you were a kid? What did your mother call it? Gravy. <laughs> <laughs> gravy. It's, it's, it's not, you don't even think about it until someone who has some sort of uh, cultural refinement says, you mean sauce. And you say, well, yeah, I know technically you're right, but Italians, Neapolitans, Sicilians, I mean, it's just Sunday's gravy day. That's all there is to it. That's, that's well, the I word spoke to my friend who owns a restaurant this morning, and he's, he's an Italian from Italy, but he lives in San Francisco. He said, well, sauce is different than, than gravy. He said, he told me that sauce is basically a cheaper version then, excuse me, gravy is a cheaper version of a sauce. It's quick. It's usually cooked with the renderings of the fat from the meat, and it's made quickly. He said, it's a te he said cheaper. He actually used the word cheaper. Doesn't mean it doesn't taste better. It does. Yeah, no, yeah, because there's, you know, home cooking of this uh, has all kinds of tricks that, you know, you use old bacon grease and, you know, oh. and to get the flavor out. But it, it's just, you know, you just say gravy. It's like so ma matter of fact. You don't I, know. Well, but I know I'm going to get 100 calls now from different Italian views, but so, Mike, your uncle is gone? Yeah, he passed away in the early 90s. So if he was alive, you wouldn't have made this call? Uh, I probably would have because he, he would have been a guy not interested in kind of, you know, this stuff wouldn't be here. But I, I wouldn't have said openly that he was actually a member of the Genovese crime family and his brother was actually the captain of, of the crew he was in who actually came up with Albert Anastasia and Murder Incorporated and there's a book I don't remember the name of it if you uh, it's about the uh, Pleasant Avenue Tavern which existed in Harlem New York which was the heroin headquarters uh, of America at the time and uh, his crew was was involved in that whole Pleasant Avenue thing and they spent a lot of time in jail for uh, heroin distribution and drugs and so on and then eventually he left Got into the uh, the uh, the numbers business, which is where they made most of their money thereafter. But um, um and speaking and of that, numbers, let me ask you something: Indian gambling casinos, they pay no taxes. How come? Does anyone have an answer to that? Uh, <laughs> nobody. Yeah, actually, here, here's a question that keeps every time I hear Obama or the fraudulent Democrats making believe that they're robbing from the rich to give to the poor. They keep saying that the rich should pay their fair share. How come no one ever brings up that Indian gambling casinos should pay their fair share? How come that's unknown, though? Why does no one mention that? They, and no one, I think, really even cares. I mean, the government has given them a sanction because supposedly, like all other groups, they wrote some form of reparation, and this is the way they kind of make up for it. Although Donald Trump has said, and I work for Donald Trump, actually, which I don't mind saying, I'm a security guard. For, I do security work for his company. And uh, he's gone into those casinos up in Connecticut. He says that they don't look like any Indians I've ever seen. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 
That's what I'm saying. I mean, Indians. I, I think I'm more Indian than some of them. Well, I, I do know that, you know. Like well, they, yes, I'm glad Trump has the guts to say it. Why don't they pay their fair share of taxes? That would help uh, uh, balance the budget, wouldn't it? We never hear anybody mentioning it. But, that, hey, this is a great call. But one thing I'm going to ask you, please, folks, don't call about gravy and don't call about so. <laughs> Please, no more gravy sauce. It's an interesting topic, but we can't do it for two days in a row.